retired Admiral James Stavridis, former NATO Supreme Allied Commander. He's now NBC News Chief International Analyst. And as our uh, designated military officer here, let's talk first about this uh, strike on a senior Hamas official in Beirut. Israel's not commenting yet, but is there anyone other than Israel or the IDF who could have conducted this strike? And what do you make of the way in which they're trying to keep some distance from it, given the political tinderbox there, as Matt Bradley described? Uh, first, um, in terms of capacity to conduct a strike, there are numerous countries that could have done it. Uh, but, you know, uh, Chewy Bono, who does it benefit? Right. It benefits the Israelis to kill him. And they did so, almost certainly. Hard to imagine anybody else. I, I think they're distancing themselves simply to try and keep from inflaming what is already going to be an inflammatory situation. Um, let's look at it this way. Uh, at the start of this sequence, say October 7th, I thought the chances of a wider war were, were really pretty low, about 10 percent. Now I think they're up to about 30 percent. Mm. The reason I am more concerned about a wider war is this kind of incident, um, probably going to be followed up by something in Doha, where a number of other senior Hamas leaders live. The, Wait, you think the, there could be violence in Doha? That seems to me like that would be incredibly inflammatory. Yeah, it would be. But um, if you're an Israeli and you watched your wives and your daughters and your children uh, killed and raped and tortured, um, there's really nothing off limits right mm. now. Um, I think it's unlikely they go to Doha, but not impossible. Anyway, my point, broadly speaking, Jared, is just that the, the tensions are rising. It's a more significant risk of a wider war. That is certainly the aftermath of this strike. What do you make of this day after planning that we're finally starting to see from Israel now several months into this war? The political decentralization that Martin and I were just talking about, but also the kind of security systems that need to be in place before anything like this could work. I am with Martin that the idea of local clans uh, taking step uh, seems far-fetched to me. Um, there just are no good options here, uh, certainly from the perspective of the Israelis. One thing I, I, would, I would almost certainly say is Hamas will not be part of the governance structure going forward. Israel will not allow that. It's simply going to be a red line for the reasons we talked about a moment ago. I think anything else could be considered. Could it be a mix of Palestinian authority, uh, Arab League, I think, is a, is a group not often mentioned that would have capacity, capability, notably Egypt and Jordan, who do have diplomatic relations with Israel. UN peacekeeping force, some combination of those, I think, is possible. I think the one thing that will not be part of a post-conflict structure is Hamas. And, Admiral, while I have you, let's talk about what's been going on in the Red Sea. We saw some significant retaliation by U.S. forces against these Houthi uh, boats the other day. Now Iran is sending its own naval vessel into that body. Uh, what do you make of the chance of ac uh, escalation, accidental or otherwise, in the Red Sea? Yeah, this is exactly why I think the chances of a wider war are expanding, because it's not just what's happening in Gaza. It's what's happening on the northern border of Israel with Hezbollah plinking rockets. They fired a thousand rockets from the north. It's also what's happening ashore in Iraq and Syria, where uh, Iranian proxies are attacking U.S. forces. And now, as you correctly point out, these Houthi rebels, I like to call them Iranian pirates, because that's what they really mm. are, are attacking merchant shipping. And all of that uh, increases tensions. Look, those destroyers can take care of themselves, but these merchant ships are largely defenseless. And if we want the global supply chains to work, we better make sure you can get through the Red Sea, because at the north is the Suez Canal. If that's shut down, it's blocks up 15 percent of the world's goods traveling on the oceans. Um, I think you're going to see the U.S. be forced to go ashore and strike at these Houthi camps if they don't stop firing missiles at our warships and at merchant ships. 
Admiral James Servit is an expert on a dangerous world. Thank you for, for coming on with us today. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.